Well, looks like the list of players that Mikel Arteta and Edu want to obviously <coughs> show the exit door from Arsenal this summer has gone ahead to emerge and we are going to be tackling one by one. We all know that there is a long list of players that is up for departures. When you talk about Cedric Soares, you have no doubt about that and him leaving the club of Arsenal. El Nini and him leaving the side of Arsenal. Edin Ketia, no doubt about it. Thomas Partey. Um, Jorginho is still a doubt. It's still doubtful for him, but other players, Rhys Nelson might be knocking on the door to leave the side of Arsenal and so on and so forth. Key and Heaney is another one that Arsenal might really look to obviously sell off, but the shocking update coming in through from the shocking update coming in through from Steve K. You know him very well. He's a correspondent of Arsenal for the transfer.com website. Has come out and really told us that Arsenal are really, 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 really contemplating on really letting this guy go. As two, as two teams have gone ahead to show their interest in Zinchenko. Welcome to the Rokani Media Football. How are you guys? I know you're watching us from my go by the names of Rokan David. Smash the like button, comment and share. If at all you're watching us for the very first time, endeavor to subscribe to this channel so as not to miss out on stories that we do upload in here on a daily. Rokan David is my name. It looks like Arsenal are really contemplating on selling this guy known as Zinchenko and they could sell him because they are really looking to get him more money and they're really having very many players down there for you. And Zinchenko said for sure Arsenal exit is the story as Bayern Munich and Newcastle have gone ahead to show intent to sign him. I'm going to really show you exactly why these two teams are really interested in really getting Zinchenko in. Pep Guardiola has come out and broken silence on how it's hard to obviously play against Liverpool at Anfield. And Erin Haaland is Norwegian friend who is known Erin, so who is not Martin Odegaard, has come out and really spoken how they spend lots of times together when they meet up in the UK. So let's see close to 400 likes. Smash this video. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel so as not to miss out on stories that we do upload in here on a daily. Now, it's a what? It's a Saturday, third video of the day coming in through, and we are going to be having more and more and more videos coming in through into the mix here. Now, the Muslims, I can say Ramadan Mubarak, and for the Christians, <clears throat> we cover you in the precious blood of Jesus Christ, and let's start it as it is right about now, as things really go on as known to plan. We start off with Steve K breaking the story that Newcastle and Bayern Munich are keen on Alexander Zinchenko with Arsenal setting an asking price of 45 million, pa 45 million euros for the left back. For the Bundesliga giants, the Ukrainian international has become one of the players high on the list to replace Alfonso, Alfonso Davis, who looks destined to live in the summer for Real Madrid. Now, <clears throat> let's talk about Zinchenko in particular. You know, last season, <laughs> he was really pivotal to the side of Arsenal, <clears throat> but he was really vulnerable. And he's one of those players that really saw Arsenal get off that trophy. If you remember... The game between Arsenal and Liverpool, when Ateta clinged and really said, no, I'm really going to leave him there to kick the ball and really play there for the very possible time, or for the very long time possible, in the 80, I think it was in the 87th minute, that's when he was really put down and guess who came in through to obviously net mug him towards the byline and really put in a very good cross that was done other than Trent Alexander-Arnold and Trent Alexander-Arnold did that after after he did that you all know what happened what happened was Arsenal went ahead to really concede an equalizer but <coughs> Ateta had already gone ahead to smell blood that something was going to happen from that side or left back position because around the 65th minute he had really told Key and Heaney to take off the jacket and really get onto the touchline to get into the game. But he sat him down. <clears throat> so that shows you how bad defensively this guy is. He's really deficient. You know, going forward is really good, but he doesn't have that intensity and the energy to obviously close down the side of Arsenal. And this season also, he costed you a goal against Liverpool. You never know. Arsenal would have gone ahead to win that game because the goal that Mohamed Salah scores, it's because... Zinchenko goes ahead to make it easy for um, for Muhammad Salah to invert, you know, 
inside of the pitch and really goes onto his strong left foot and then hits that ball past the near post and David Raya couldn't obviously come in through to stop it. So <clears throat> if I start telling you how Zinchenko is real vulnerable defensively, I think you can all agree with me. And if you're to talk about the best left backs in the Premier League, trust me, he's not among those because there are very many that have gone ahead to balance the two defensively and offensively because if Zichenko was good offensively then he would have been one of the players with very many assists in the league let me show you how many assists he had last season because i'm a man of facts i speak with facts and i want to come in here and get challenged if you think you really have more facts that can really downgrade this last season in the premier league he played 27 games and created two assists you get um, this season has played 22 games and he has two assists. Now, if you're to talk about elite, <laughs> the elite, uh, the elite fullbacks in the Premier League, you know, they are really having better assists. Let me show you Benjamin White, a player I don't rate hugely as far as going forward is concerned and really being offensive elite. Last season he had four assists more than Zinchenko. Sorry, last season he had five assists more than Zinchenko. And this season is having four with 11 games to go, sorry, with 10 games to go for the club of Arsenal. So it shows you that Zichenko is really, doing, is really doing bad because if I take him to the elite list, you know, people like Trent Alexander-Arnold, <laughs> right? Let me talk about the left backs, the Ben Chirwells, Luke Shaw, um, Robertson, Nathan Ake, uh, this other guy that plays for Aston Villa, is he called Moreno? Mm, and other left backs, you know, Estupian who plays for Estupian who plays for Brighton, you know, all those are elite left backs that have gone ahead to put in assists. And Zinchenko only gives you one thing, like inverting the midfield and obviously going ahead to do the needful. But if you're talking about left backs in the Premier League, I don't think that you can really rank him anywhere. He's good. He's technically gifted. And I'm going to let you know what I think Ateta should do with him in what he's planning. And the other deficiency that has going to hit to affect Zichenko is that he's not a physical player. The game of football has shifted from being talented to being a physical player. And that's why you see to it that Jakub Kivi has going to hit to come in through and taken that slot over Zinchenko. And Zinchenko returned when Arsenal was playing against Brentford and he never really got into the starting 11 as compared to last season. Last season, the moment Zinchenko got onto, uh, got onto the grass from the sick bay, Ateta ushered him into the team of Arsenal immediately. But Kivio has gone ahead to show that he's really good and solid and he has gone ahead to put in performances. I think he has like three goal contributions, you know, in the games he has gone ahead to play. I think he has gone ahead to play like seven games of which he has gone ahead to start six consecutive games in there for you. And he, he showed you that he trusts him more than Zinchenko because he let him play 105 minutes. Zinchenko only played 15 minutes of the second of the second half of the extra time and Ateta has gone ahead to really show us that Zinchenko is not really trusted and the other reason as to why I think this is valid it's because <coughs> Ateta has gone to see Tomiyasu return and Julian Timber if there is a player that Mikel Ateta is not willing to shift his position it's Benjamin White Benjamin White has gone ahead to obviously seal that position with the right back of Arsenal and Mikel Ateta loves him die. That is it. Mikel Ateta loves him die. So that means on the left back position, he's really having four players competing for that. Julian Timber, Zinchenko, Jakub Kivio and uh, Tomiyasu. The only reason that would have gone ahead to see Zinchenko play onto the left back position is that he's left footed. But right now, there is a new boy in town who is left-footed and does almost everything better than Zinchenko. That is Jakub Kivio. You know, he's just 21 years of age. <clears throat> he's a press-resistant player. He has gone ahead to put in shifts left, right, and center that everyone really admits. So I think Zinchenko right now, when you're to rank the hierarchy of the left backs of Arsenal, he is the last. He's lacked rust. I think Julian Timber will be the first left back choice Jakub Kivio Tomiyasu and Zinchenko so this all leaves Zinchenko in a position of him 
being sold by Arsenal and with the interest that is coming in through from Bayern Munich as Steve Kass going to hit let us know because Bayern Munich might lose their left back or they are going to lose him to Real Madrid because he's left with one, one year on his contract he has refused obviously put pen to paper now the proposed contract coming in from Bayern Munich and if at all Bayern Munich don't sell him this summer he might live out on a free and they can get like 50 million euros from the player so Bayern Munich is looking at Zinchenko to obviously bring him in at the side of the Arians arena to play that side and remember Bayern Munich is going to be playing the side of Arsenal so Zinchenko is going to take the test of Bayern Munich and maybe Bayern Munich might use that time when he comes to Germany to obviously try to convince him that this is the best place to be and it has, it has been done by fans if I told the fans here that the board wants to sign you those fans can really chant your name and really hail you with lots of praises for you to come in through and really get to know and fall in love with the side of Bayern Munich so Bayern Munich is one of those teams that are interested in this player because they know uh, uh, Alonso, Alfonso Davis is really leaving and maybe they can go in for Zinchenko to get in that experience as a player in there for you. That is Zinchenko. Now, 50 million euros is what Bayern Munich want from Alfonso Alves and they'll take off 40 to sign Zinchenko. So we are left with some two and a half months to enter what we call the summer transfer window and we don't know how this is really gonna really <clears throat> orchestrate out. But the only way this boy cannot leave the side of Arsenal is if at all Mikel Arteta decides to play him in the midfield, like to add him to to add him to Declan Rice and um, to add him to Declan Rice and um, to add him to Declan Rice and Odegaard, right <laughs> into that midfield. Then he tries not to even even not to even sign what we call a center forward and let Kai Havertz lead the line for Arsenal to compete with Gabriel Jesus. That's the only way I see Zichenko really staying at the side of Arsenal. But if if Zichenko really wants to get ample playing time at the side of Arsenal, he needs to really get he really he really he really needs a miracle. And Ateta needs to come up with a system that can get Zinchenko <clears throat> a lot of playing minutes. Because even if it's to really do what we call a rotation, the hierarchy of rotation is really not in favor of Zinchenko. You know, if Julian Timber takes over, don't tell me that Zinchenko will start ahead of Yakub Kivio because Yakub Kivio has shown us that he's really good. And I, I, I bet Yakub Kivio is going to be the left back when Arsenal is playing Man City. <laughs> that is it. So, we wait and see how that pans out, but Zinchenko's calamitous defensive deficiency has gone ahead to lead to this story. It's not only Bayern Munich that is interested in Zinchenko, but also Newcastle. And why is Newcastle interested in him? While at Newcastle, we are told that Eddie Hoy is looking to strengthen his defense, especially on the left-hand side. The club are playing Dan Ban as the first-choice left-back with mixed success this season. Matt Target is hardly used, while Lewis Hall on loan from Chelsea is struggling for game time. And for Lewis Hall, we've been told that he's really going to come up and do the needful for the club of mm, for the club of Newcastle. And they're willing to obviously cash in, <coughs> sorry, to cash out to Chelsea to make that loan permanent. But you'll need a senior defender. That is it. And... Is Zinchenko that kind of player? Zinchenko is really calamitous, by the way. You know, going forward, <coughs> he's not all that elite defender. Sorry, player. Because he cannot really create a lot in the final third. That's the problem, you know? <coughs> and unless you play him in your midfield, that's when you can get the best out of Zinchenko. I believe if anyone wants to get the best out of Zinchenko, I think... It's better I played him as a midfielder or a right attack midfielder. And I went ahead to talk about that once here. That Ateta should try out Zinchenko to compete with Bukayo Saka and see how Zinchenko can really perform. Because Zinchenko is the best skilled player at Arsenal. He has all what it takes to beat an opponent and really find out a pass. So, I think that's the best they can do. But for Newcastle, <clears throat> I think they need a more solid player that can balance the two better. You know, maybe a key and Heaney in that mix. And... The other reason as to why I think Arsenal might be contemplating on selling this guy, it's because of his injury record. When you look at the season that started in 2023, um, 
he has been out with he has been out for a very long time with what we call a calf injury you know so almost three four times Zinchenko has been out because of the calf injury and uh, <coughs> you have to understand how stuff really happens in such moments so for me and my brain i think zinchenko it's high time he left the club of arsenal because i don't see any future unless otherwise ateta finds out a very clear plan for him and ateta and arsenal might find it okay for him to stay but will will zinchenko find it okay to stay when he's not getting ample playing time and we all know that he left man city because he was complaining of ample playing time especially the manager never really played him consistently in a single position and if Adeta starts to be a tinker man and really throwing him around like Pep used to do at Man City, then <clears throat> I don't think it will really excite Zinchenko. Zinchenko will really knock on the, on the door of Mikel Ateta and Edouard tell him, please, I want to go. So, will they try to do the need for and really force him out like they've gone ahead to do to Aaron Ramsdale? Because for Aaron Ramsdale, he was the, one of the best goalkeepers in the league with 15 clean hits last season. And they went ahead to bring another goalkeeper, that is David Raya. So, you never know what Arsenal is going to do. So that is what I had for Zichenko. And let's get into Pep Guardiola. Pep Guardiola has come out and really said the following that. I've never been in Anfield. And there is no team in the world that can go to Anfield for 90 minutes. Being in control like in the Banabu or like here. At the Etihad, I've never seen a team for 90 minutes controlling over us all the time so they were like questioning he's not controlling the game for the second half because for the first half we all know what happened man city was in total control everything they had was in abundance they had more shots they had more corners liverpool had zero corners they had more set pieces and more shots on total at goal so in the second half think some assaulted and liverpool took center stage and if it was not doing no sorry uh, uh lewis diaz missing out on three clear cut chances it would have been one of those games that would have gone ahead to really talk about as a game of two halves where man city dominated the first half and liverpool dominated the second half so it's hard by the to dominate liverpool you know you can dominate like 45 minutes and they can even share the others you can even dominate 60 by the last 30 he might obviously spark off the best so i would love to understand exactly what one who doubts that what pep is talking is really naive about it to tell me what he thinks about it because at, at anfield it is really a hostile environment created by those fans and they shout scream at you and you can lose even focus in there so pep is giving respect to klopp and the anfield audience because they hate them going i mean it's liverpool having close to seven eight players injured they had to put up a show and that show really went ahead to produce results if it was known the referee and luis diaz then the rest would have gone ahead to go in favor of liverpool but they happened to end in a draw now you know sander badge big player has come out and said we see each other with erin Haaland once or twice a week we just eat good food have a laugh sunday roast roasted potatoes gravy yokerish puddings we have a good time it's nice to have a fellow norwegian a special fan character so <clears throat> looks like sunday badge is a very close birthday to erin Haaland than even martin odegaard because he would have gone ahead to think that these two would have gone ahead to be bonding on together but it looks like sunday badge finds it easy to <coughs> To mix and mingle with Erin Haaland down in England and really share food together and really do the it looks like their friendship is really huge and they've gonna hate to really have a very very huge bond amongst themselves and it really goes ahead to the rest of the people that these two are really doing good and they're going to the international break and to represent their country that is Norway in the upcoming friendlies so what are your thoughts about Zinchenko shocking Arsenal exit? I welcome in the comment section below. Do you think Arsenal should sell him or they should keep him around? And what is the better plan? Selling him and getting like 38 million pounds or 45 million euros and then sell him or and then get in other players and strengthen other sides because the left back position is really having a lot of competition and I don't think I can beat it. 
then all you really keep him around what do you make about a tater so what do you make about pep guardiola hailing club and the anfield audience on how dominant they are when it comes to playing at anfield and lastly sander barge hailing the atmosphere or the hospitality of erring Haaland. i sign up for now see you later may the living to god bless you abundantly rock and david means my name i sign up for now see you later the christians we cover you all in the precious blood of jesus christ and the muslims ramadan mubarak good night to those going to bed i'm returning with the match reaction spurs has been beaten by fulham 3-0